Hi everyone, this is Ultimate Academy's team presenting Onyx Financial Track. We're currently on the Vendors module and in the previous lecture we finished the accounts payable with the reports and all. And in this lecture we will start talking about Purchase Management System. So first screen we have is Purchase Costing Types. Let's bring that up and get started. The costing we're adding in this screen is related to the credit letters. First, we'll click on Add. The system automatically adds the costing method number. We'll add the costing method name, let's say FOB, which stands for Free on Board. And uh, in this method, the vendor hands over the purchases on board, which means that the buyer, or us in this case, will handle all the relevant financial expenses, which are uh, the cost of the goods, insurance, shipping, transportation, and all of the relevant expenses. In the letter of credit invoice account, we'll hit F9 and select that account. After you add the account, uh, you'll specify the number of additional accounts, like the accounts that are linked to the cost of these letters of credit. If, for example, we said that the additional accounts are going to be a total of three accounts, then the system will allow data entry in three out of the 24 additional fields that you have down below. So in account number one, we'll hit F9 and select the first additional account. And that is basically how it's going to work with the rest of them. Next screen we have is purchase request types. We'll move on to that one. So in the screen, we specify the number of purchases that we might want to make. Like, for example, a request to purchase assets or raw material. You'll click on Add and just type in the name of the type and the foreign name as well. And for your information, there is one type that is set up in the system by default, by the way, which is Purchase Request. All right, so uh, there it is. That one is by default. And we'll move on to the next screen, which is Purchase Order Types. Same idea as the previous screen, but here it is not a request, it's an order. And note that you will need, or let's say um, it's preferable to unify the Purchase Request Types and the Purchase Order Types. That is just to uh, help the people in the Purchase Department or the Administration. Alright, so next screen is Expenses Encoding. And from this screen, we can encode uh, specific expenses that we can add automatically uh, or easily select for our purchases. After you click on Add, you will enter the name and the foreign name for that expense, Transportation, for example. And in account number, we head F9 and select the Transportation Expenses account. Automatically, the name of the selected account is added. Then we will select the amount type, whether it's going to be a percentage or a specific amount. In case we selected amount, then obviously we will need to specify that amount. Uh, we have a variable here, uh, enter account in purchase invoice. By activating this one, the system will add that expense account in the daily journal for the purchases. So consequently, you will add that expense to the cost of the purchase itself. If that cost is tax, then of course, we will need to add the tax method in the lower table. And we will make that selection out of the tax calculation methods that we've already added before. All right, so now we're actually done with the setup. We'll move on to the inputs, which is one screen basically. And that is going to be vendor item details. From this screen, we'll specify what exactly are the items that the vendor supplies to the facility. The first field after clicking on Add is item data filling, either by vendor or per item. Um, if we selected by vendor, then we can add more than one vendor for an item and we specify these vendors from vendor code from and to. So let's explain that. If, for example, we'll say that vendor codes from one to two provide item number one, it means that we have two vendors that provide item 
uh, number one or item code number one, whichever that item was. We'll specify the item code in the field. And in case we choose per item, then we're linking a single vendor to a bunch of items uh, that they're providing. Um, so obviously now we will specify one vendor and then an item code from and to, you'll select the items that they provide. All right. So in currency, you'll select the currency that you use to deal with this vendor, whether it's a local currency or foreign. That depends on your previous entry in the currencies. And in transaction type, in case we're linking new vendors to new items, then we will select filling data. Then we click on filling data. So we would get the details in the lower table. The second option we have is uh, show data. And in this case, we're viewing old data and selecting from um, existing data, basically, the vendor and the items. So we've entered both before. In the detail, detailed data below, uh, if we select more than one vendor for an item, we can specify from the checkbox on the right which one of them is the main vendor. So that is basically the first way to use the screen. The second way is import from Excel. Uh, you import and form an Excel sheet by clicking on this icon and you follow the process that we've already covered together before. Now let's get into the transactions. The first screen is purchase request. This is where we place a request for a needed purchase. We can either use the screen by importing from Excel or through the functions of the screen itself or the buttons and the features that we see in front of us. We'll click on add. It will automatically add the branch, request number and date. And you should note that the branch is added automatically based on your login. It also shows us the available date uh, for the order, which is the date of the transaction itself. But you can actually change this one or modify it uh, according, of course, to the actual date. We can select a call center from the drop down menu. And in request side, uh, we type down who is requesting this purchase. So either a person's name or whichever is in your case, because in department, we will select the actual department that is requesting this purchase. Then there is description and reference number. Both are optional. We enter the code of the vendor that we're requesting this purchase from. Head of nine as usual and select the right vendor from the list. So in case we retrieved this data uh, or the data for this purchase request from any of these documents, we select the document from the drop down menu install from and we have the option to enter the reference number. So in number, we will head F9 and select the number of that document if it's existing in the system. Then we click on auto request and the system opens up a new screen. Um, in this screen that the system will be opening up shortly, <laughs> um, Basically, we place an automatic purchase request. So we re-enter all the data that we just entered and also specify the warehouse group. In both cases, whether it's an automatic purchase request or if we're using the screen itself, we specify in the table the item code. Um, and when we select the item, the system brings up the measurement unit, warehouse, warehouse available quantity, and the existing quantity in the entire facility. We enter the needed quantity for the order in the order quantity column. And that's it. If you like for this screen, that's basically everything. Now we'll talk about uh, quotation, which is the next screen. So in quotation, we record the pricings or let's say the offers that the suppliers made. We can either import that from Excel or we use the screen itself. Uh, we'll click on add. The main data is automatically added. We will go ahead and select the vendor, call center, method of taxes calculation, tender number, and tender date as well. Uh, in required days, we specify the number of days that the vendor will need to deliver the requested purchase. We select the item code from the table, the quantity, the price, and everything in the vendor's offer. Um, and there is additional data, which is a tab with a bunch of empty fields for the user to 
basically have more space for any additional information that they need. So if this vendor adds any additional expenses, we can define that in other charges. And in charge number, we will head F9 and select it from the charges that we entered in expenses encoding screen, which is the screen that we just went through. We will click on process and the system automatically distributes that expense over the cost of the items. And obviously in tax, we will enter the tax calculation method. And that's basically everything. So we'll move on to the next screen, which is purchase order. So we can either import the purchase order from Excel or we can enter it manually. As we can see, we have seven tabs. So we're already pretty familiar with import from Excel, tax and additional fields, other charges as well, because we just covered that. Now let's talk about master details. Main data is automatically filled in. And if we're placing this purchase order from a purchase request or a quotation or any of these choices, then we will select the one that we want to use and type down the number of that document in request number. After we select the vendor, currency, and cost center as usual, we define the invoice type from the existing types that we have here. Now, in item costing, we select the right method that we want to use here, whether it's going to be the last income and price, uh, weighted average cost, or the vendor price. You also need to select the method of tax calculation based on your previous entry. And if we want to suspend this order or basically stop it, we'll check the inactive box and enter the reason, obviously. In case we want to add the quantity that will be shipped before it is actually out for the shipping, we can activate the variable enter shipping quantity before incoming. As for financial logged, so this variable allows the financial administration to suspend this entire transaction um, until the financial administration themselves remove that lock. Before entering the items in the table, uh, the items we're ordering, I mean, we can review the status of these items at the warehouses by clicking on advanced options. All right, so here we can actually search for the items and review the existing quantity and in which warehouses and so on. So we're basically viewing the details of these items. And if we want to use um, a calculator, we can click on this icon and it will bring up your uh, computer's calculator. In case we have items that have no existing pricing, we can add pricing for it. And we can also review the price of all the items by clicking on item pricing, which will bring up the item pricing screen from the inventory module. And we already talked about that one before. All right, so when we click on this icon, that means that we need to check the barcode uh, before printing and the printing method for these item bar barcodes. Uh, there we go. So it brings up the items barcode print printing screen from the inventory module as well. And now we can specify the items in the table below. We will hit F9 and select the items. We're already familiar with how to uh, fill in the data in that table. You will basically just click on the field, hit F9, and select the right choice. If not that, you will manually enter the data. All right, so in follow-up, we can track the order. You'll select the order number and the system will show you whether uh, it is closed or not yet. So in insurance, we enter the insurance policy, um, insurance company, insurance terms, the number of the vendor's invoice, um, receive date, and all of the information that is related to the insurance of the purchase. So side note on this tab, it is mostly used by shipping companies. Any facility or any activity can actually use this screen, but what we're saying is that it is mostly used by shipping companies because that kind of information is like really important in their field or important to their work. So that is basically it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe and we will see you again in the next lecture.